Hi everybody, I hope you're doing well. Today I want to talk about how disease can be measured by using something called the EDSS assessment, otherwise known as the Expanded Disability Status Scale. Today I want to share 11 years worth of my EDSS assessments from my CAMPATH trial. My neurologist sent over the data to me about two weeks ago and it's the first time that I've actually seen it so I want to share it with you and I want to be able to show you the fluctuations in my kind of progression through the 11 years and the way that my scoring changed from the time that I actually went on to the trial in 2008 and the data collected all the way through to 2020 when I finished the trial and just to kind of show you some of the years where my EDSS score went up um, because I had some very stressful periods throughout those years and I honestly believe that it had something to do um, with that and an effect on my body and therefore had an effect on my EDSS score and the EDSS score goes from 0 to 10 and the higher the number um, the higher the kind of disability and the problems that you have with mobility and problems like that. So I will share that with you. But before I kind of do, just wanted to talk a little bit more about it and just explain why it's used. So a lot of the times um, EDSS assessments are used widely in clinical trials. So the first time that I actually had an EDSS assessment was before I went on to my CAMPATH trial. And that was mainly because they wanted to see if I fit the criteria um, to be able to go on and have my treatment for CAMPATH. Because a lot of the time, or maybe back in that time when I was actually having the treatment, you had to fit a certain criteria to be able to carry on and have the treatment. So for example, when I first started my treatment, um, I was at a certain level, but if I was over that level, I may not have been able to go on and actually continue on to the trial and have that treatment. So it might be a benchmarker for neurologists to sort of say whether you can go on and have a treatment or not. I don't know if it's changed over the time, but I think that it might be a benchmarker to see whether you can or can't go on to have disease modifying treatment or not. The EDSS assessment lasts around about 30 minutes and they assess lots of different things. Um, things like cognition, coordination, strength, sensory um, weakness and vision and walking and there's a combination of different things that they do to test this and I can kind of go through some of those a little bit later and what they do is they take all the individual symptom assessments and they combine them more numerically and they combine them then into one single score and that gives you your EDSS assessment score. And so, as I said, the scoring system is then from 0 to 10, 0 being that you basically don't have any symptoms at all, and 10 being the worst one, um, death from MS. I will put a really detailed description of the kind of scoring in my description box so that you can go and have a look at that. Dr. Brandon Bieber did a really, really good uh, video on this. So I will link that in my box as well so that you can go and watch this because his is really informative, really detailed information. So go have a watch of that if you want to know really in depth about it. Okay, so let's have a look at my EDSS assessment score. So the chart starts in 2008 and that was just before I went on to my CAMPATH trial. And my EDSS score starts at 2.5 there. Within the time of 2008 and 2020, and that's when my um, CAMPATH trial ends, uh, there are seven times where my EDSS score peaks over three. And the time between 2012 and 2013-14 
it peaks over four. And I can pinpoint those dates exactly to dates where I was going through some very, very difficult times, emotionally, very, very stressful. And I actually remember going to those EDSS um, assessment dates and thinking that I felt very drained. I felt very tired. I remember my symptoms like being flared up. I remember having like tingling in my fingers and my limbs more than usual. I felt really tired. I just felt drained all the time. I had sort of resid oh sorry, I had residual uh symptoms of like my old symptoms that I had from when I had my very very bad relapse. I just felt so bad and I and I think that that's why my EDSS score had jumped from 2.5 up to 4 because the increments go up by half um, like 0.5 of an increment so actually to jump from 2.5 to 4 is actually quite a big increment and sort of reading about the EDSS scores and how they're given and what they're based on sensory symptoms are given are scored quite highly so I think that that's that would have been around about that time why I would have been being scored higher than normal over that period of time it came back down again because the stress would have sort of just um, gone away and then my EDSS score of course would have come down and there were also periods on my chart I know my chart's not the best I'm sorry that you possibly can't see see it but I'll just talk you through it but there were times on my chart where it you know it fluctuated from sort of 2.5 to 3 to 4 3.5 down to 2 and even at times down to 1 um, but the important thing is is that actually it stayed very very steady on average over the 11 years dr boster has done a video on this and he talks about how disease disease modifying drugs will actually help to stabilize your edss over a period of time and that's what i can see so i can see that in 2008 i had an edss assessment of score of 2.5 and then in 2020, I ended up with a EDSS assessment score of 2.5, even though in between they fluctuated, but actually they have kind of evened themselves out. So I think that it suggests to me that the periods where I had really high scores is probably because of the stressful emotional times that I had during those periods and it probably just flared up my MS symptoms again. Um, it definitely wasn't new relapses or anything like that because my MRIs would have showed it. It was just residual um, symptoms from my MS because of stress. So we need to steer clear of stress. That is one thing I definitely know. <laughs> um, so at present, neurologists use three major markers to assess the disease activity with somebody with MS and that is through things like a physical assessment like the EDSS and that's also trying to um, see their relapse rate as well and it's with biological markers um, like MRI scans and things like that and even though the physical examinations have been around for ages and they are very very good and they tell um, neurologists a lot of things and give them a lot of information for me personally they don't give the neurologist the information about how you're feeling on a day-to-day -to -day basis with fatigue and your other everyday things that you would do and how MS affects your other day-to-day -day activities they, it, the EDSS score doesn't really take that into consideration. And although you do have like a physical examination on your upper extremities, it's not as thorough as what you would do with your lower 
limbs and that kind of thing. So I'm, you know, and for, and for somebody who does have a problem with their arms and their upper body and strength, I just feel that it doesn't take into consideration all the other things that come with MS. So I think it's very good and I absolutely praise the work that all the neurologists are doing and I think it's great but I just think that it's so heavily weighted on one side and I think that maybe it could be adapted in different ways to capture other information. And also, when you're doing an EDSS assessment, there are so many factors that you don't think about because um, when you go in for the EDSS assessment, Yes, it's only half an hour, but when you've got a group of people doing it and you're sitting waiting and you've got fatigue um, and that half an hour turns into two and a half or three hours and then, of course, you've got the physical examination and all that kind of thing, it's a long old day for somebody with MS. And so there are other factors that people don't take into consideration with MS. So it's... um. Yeah, it's a long day. So if you're interested in knowing a couple of things that they do in the EDSS assessment, I will walk you through them quickly now. Uh, it's not all of them, it's not an extensive thing, but very, very quickly, they will do a 500 meter timed walk with you. They will get you to walk on a tightrope with one foot in front of the other. They will get you to hop on one leg. They will get you to stand on one leg and close your eyes. They will take a pin and they will do the dull sharp test where you have to close your eyes and dull sharp, dull sharp, dull sharp. And they will do that on all your limbs, neck, face, dull sharp, dull sharp. And they will do a vision test where you have to look at a board from a distance, cover one eye, check if you can read all the letters, other eye, check, read all the letters. They will do a nose to finger, moving the finger quickly. So you have to coordination and then the other way. Coordination. Slapping and changing and the other way. Wiggle the tongue. Ah, cycle the legs. Excuse the dirty jogging bottoms. I've just been out walking the dogs. Oh, nice socks, Laura. I'm tired just doing that. I hope that by sharing this data and being able to see data, somebody's data from sort of quite a long period of time is useful. And um, I find it really interesting as well because these are all things that I haven't seen. I just think that it helps because I honestly think that it shows that um, DMDs, disease modifying drugs are helping to stabilize um, MS throughout the years. It certainly feels like it has had an effect for me and I just really hope that it continues. So thank you everybody for watching and I hope that you're all keeping well and I will see you very soon. Take care.